Hello Interwebs, welcome to Let's Fix Computers. I've got uh, an Acer Aspire E1 522 here. Uh, this thing needs a new keyboard. Um, it's an old model, but um, this particular chassis design is very common. There's loads of these out in the wild. And um, the keyboard on it, as you can see, is what I would refer to as an integrated keyboard, where it's... Um, by at face value, it's completely integrated into the top case, also known as the palm rest. And usually when you see a laptop like this that needs a new keyboard, it generally means that you've either got to replace the entire top case as one unit, uh, or the keyboard will be heat staked into the back of it, uh, which turns into one of the nightmare replacement scenarios. However, this one is actually a lot easier than it looks. So I'm gonna show you guys this keyboard replacement um, process. So you can see that on these Acer laptops, uh, this is not as bad as it looks. Um, so if you get one of these in for repair or you've got one yourself and the keyboard has died because these things are all getting toward, you know, I, I don't wanna say end of life, but they're all at that sort of midlife cycle needs an overhaul age. And, you know, things like keyboards and stuff tend to die. Um, so let's get this thing apart. The first thing I'm going to do is take out all the screws on the bottom. So battery out, this cover's coming off, and we're just going to take out every screw in sight so we can um, split the top and bottom case. So let's get that out. All right, the DVD drive is giving me some trouble. After this screw is removed, the DVD drive should just slide out. However, this one doesn't want to come out. The customer did warn me that this thing has been dropped before and the DVD drive doesn't shut properly and you can see that it doesn't close very nicely there. However, it's obviously catching on something. I'm gonna try putting some pressure on top of the drive just to see if I can clear it. There it goes, that's done the job. Oof. Okay, so we got that DVD drive out. That was just catching uh, the top of the drive there was just catching on the edges of the laptop. So you just needed to get a you know a prying tool or um, or some kind of just a pallet knife or something just to clear those out. Now we can remove those last three screws and we'll be in. I also think we might need to take out three screws along the back of the battery bay there as well. Okay, now this guy's just gonna, with a bit of a wiggle, that's gonna lift up. I'm not gonna pull it right away because it's still attached with cables. I'm just defeating the clips, there we go. Now I'll just turn this up just so you can see what we're doing underneath the keyboard. And now we need to unlock that. And unlock that. And there's our keyboard. All right, the inside of this laptop looks to be in pretty good condition. We'll blow out the fan just as a matter of course because the fan is always full of dust in a laptop. So we'll make sure that gets done. However, I'll do that in a moment once I've uh, done the rest of the keyboard. All right, so here's our top case. And again, looking at the back of it, it looks pretty integrated. But what's actually gonna happen is if we take off a few more screws, this metal plate will actually come off and reveal the back of the keyboard to us. So I'm just gonna start looking for screws and removing them on site. So we've got a couple of these flat ones all around the outside. And then I can see a couple of small ones on the inside. Okay, now this metal plate should come off somehow. 
I'll just start pulling that up to see what it does. Ow. Ah, there we go. Thought that felt like it was still holding on. And another one. That's more like it. Now we're getting somewhere. And another one. There we go. Now that keyboard will just lift out. There we go. Okay, now I'll grab a brush or a toothbrush or something and just brush any schmutz off of that just to make sure we're not embedding anything. And I'll take my new keyboard. So I bought my keyboard on eBay, about eight pound, 10 pounds, something like that. Um, so you wanna search for something like um, Acer Aspire E1 Keyboard UK or um, Acer Aspire One um, Keyboard uh, EU or US or whatever your regional locale is. So I've put UK on the end of mine to make sure I get the UK keyboard layout. So we get, uh, you know, a proper shift key. Uh, none of this American rubbish. Although that much being said, these keyboards are fairly similar. You can see where they've kind of merged keys together in order to make it fit a universal layout. Anyway, let's put that guy in. And now I've just got to put that plate back on and we're just going to screw it all back together again. Now there's a very similar layout on uh, uh, quite a few of these Acer ones. This is easier than the last Acer I did, which was a little bit more uh, complicated. I can't remember what model that was. Um, then you also see a similar kind of deal with um, a lot of HP laptops. However, the HP keyboards are heat staked in. And what that means is that um, the back of the keyboard has got little plastic rods that stick up through this metal bit. So the plastic rods stick up through it and then they use a machine that just melts the top of those rods down. So it's got a, a plastic blob on the end so it doesn't come back out again. And when you remove the metal thing, you've got to break all of those plastic bits off. And you can usually refit uh, heat state keyboards because usually when you put it all back together again, you can just remelt the heat stakes and get a little bit more out of them, but they're never quite perfect. So as I say, be a bit careful if you encounter one of those. Uh, in the meantime, I'm going to put all these screws back in and try and remember where they all went. Uh, I think I'm just going to start putting in a screw anywhere where there's a hole because I wasn't really paying attention. Of course, uh, because I record my work, uh, I could always just pause my recording and look back at where I started. So if you're doing this for if you're doing this for the first time, it's always a good idea to either record your work or take pictures as you go. So just every time you remove something, every time you take something off, take a picture of it. So that way you can see how it was as you went. Uh, which is perfect for seeing where screws went previously. Yeah, see, I've definitely got something wrong here because I've run out of the small screws and I know for certain that there were some screws here and here. So there must have been some holes here that weren't populated. I'm actually going to pause and check. All right, I've adjusted my screw layout a, uh, a little bit. Uh, there were definitely some empty holes when I started. Um, so I've spread out what screws I've got. So at the very least, the keyboard isn't going to fall out. So that'll do quite nicely. It's in there fairly solidly and I've run out of screws. So there are at least as many screws holding this in as there were when I started. Uh, okay, so what I'm gonna do now, I'm just gonna quickly um, take an airline to the CPU fan on the body of the laptop and then we'll put this all back together again. Okay, and before I put everything back together, I'm just gonna take a screwdriver and these silver screws on the hinges, I'm just gonna tweak those up and make sure they're tight. And they've got just a little bit in them. I'm putting just an eighth of a turn into those. Ooh, quarter of a turn into that one. Can I get to that one there? Oh, not quite. Can if I remove that. These screws will often come loose over time on laptops. And 
when these screws become loose, that's when your hinges break. And that is a real bad time for any laptop. That turns a, uh, that turns a laptop that is in good condition into a laptop that's not in good condition. So it doesn't cost anything just to give those guys just a little nip as you're servicing a laptop. All right, let's put this back together again. I'm gonna lay the keyboard on and I'm just gonna thread those back in. So before we start, I'm just gonna push down on those locking lugs. I'll just show you a close up of how that lock works actually, because I very rarely bother to do this. So the two most, uh, so these connectors are generally known as um, ZIF connectors or LIF connectors, and that is zero insertion force or low insertion force. Um, and the way these things generally work is uh, it's flat and the ribbon goes in sideways like that, and it locks with this colored part, this bar here. So when it's retracted like that, that's in the locked position and it bites down onto the ribbon, and that is the unlocked position. Then the other common version you'll see is this one here. And this one works where the locking bar flips up like that. So you can see how that functions. It flips up by 90 degrees. So up is unlocked and down is locked. Uh, so when you insert something into there, um, you will want to make sure that the cable is all the way in. And the cable itself, we usually have some kind of line on it. Has, have these guys got lines? Yes, they have. Let me just show you the line. So here's the ribbon, and we've got a blue plastic tab on the top. This usually faces toward you, and then on the bottom you can see we've got connectors. And you'll want to insert this thing all the way into the connector until that line is right up against the connector. And here's another example here I can actually show you on this trackpad. So let's unlock that guy by flipping the tab up. And now I'll insert that in. Make sure I actually show you guys what I'm doing here. I'll push that in. And again, it's zero insertion force. And then when I close that tab there, the end of the tab has lined up with the line and it's completely straight. If you've got it in like If you put it in like that, where it's visibly crooked, it ain't gonna work. So make sure that it's all the way in and it's straight. And when you close it, everything should line up perfectly. And that's how you deal with ZIF connectors. So let's get this one back in. So in this case, this connector actually has the contacts facing upwards, which is unusual. And I'm actually gonna, in a sec, I'm actually gonna grab the old keyboard and just confirm that. But we'll get these both in first. So can I show you that one? Yep, so we're just gonna put that one in. Slide that in and then lock it down. And I can see that that is straight. Well, straight enough anyway, there we go. That was just off screen, but you get the idea. It's very awkward to, uh, it's very awkward to connect those and show what you're doing on a camera. If I just check the old keyboard that I took out, we can see from the fold in the cable here, so that plastic bit is facing there. So when that's upright in the laptop, the connectors were facing upwards. So I know that I've got that in the right way round. So if you plug in, if you do all of this and you put it all back together again and it doesn't work, first thing to do is don't panic, open it up again and just check that you've got those connectors in correctly because even I get that wrong sometimes. I'll do all of this, I'll put all of these 20,000 screws back in the laptop and it won't work. And then when I open the laptop up again, you'll find that that connector is just not quite straight. Or sometimes it's hilariously off kilter and you'll be like, I don't know what part of me thought that was correct. But yes, right, that's in. Close the laptop and make sure that all of the gaps have closed, which they have. So now is an excellent time to turn the device on and check that it works. Um, if the battery has got charge in it, I'm gonna do that on this one. Otherwise, I'm gonna gamble. I've got the hard drive disconnected at the moment just to protect it. However, I should be able to turn that on. Yep, we can. And I'm just gonna spam the F2 key to take it into setup. 
And now from setup, I can just use the left and right arrows to change pages on the setup screen. And you can see that our cursor keys are working there. Now, obviously for a true test, you kind of want to go across at least the first two row of keys and just go QWERTY OP and ASTF um, however, if your cursor keys are working and F2 was working, the chances are you're good. Um, so yeah, that's certainly in that's certainly good enough that it's worth putting in all of the screws now. So let's close it up and get all those screws fitted. going to sort out this DVD drive as well. You can see where the uh, the bracket here has been strained. It's actually a little bit bent and it's not flat. This is probably why the DVD drive wasn't sitting correctly in the laptop. So I'm just going to unscrew that bracket. I'm just going to straighten that out just by eye. And that should just mean that the laptop actually sits correctly in the... Uh, yeah, that should mean that the drive sits correctly in the laptop. Just about anyway. These are not the right pliers for the job, but whatever. That should do. That's a little bit in the other direction. You can see there's a slight curve that way. However, that should just press out when I put the uh, bracket back in. There we go. The DVD drive format, so this shape here, is standardized. The bit that's not standardized is this rear bracket. So we have a custom bracket here that's just screwed onto the back to hold it in place. And then the front bezel, uh, this bezel is obviously custom fit for the chassis. However, this bezel will just pull off and you can put a different one on. So you don't have to buy a DVD drive that's specific for your laptop. You can buy any DVD drive as long as you've got the bracket and the bezel to go with it. Oh, that doesn't feel good sliding back into the laptop. Oh, there we go. And yeah, that's sitting all the way in now. So hopefully that should work better once it's all done. Done so, and let's give this the ceremonial wipe down. Tesco window and glass, Windex, Windeline, whatever brand you find in the supermarket, glass cleaner. And yes, it's absolutely safe to use glass cleaner on the LCD. I've been doing it for years, never damaged anything. I can tell my cloth needs cleaning because it's getting harder and harder to get a streak-free finish here. If I keep turning over onto dry parts of the cloth, it gets easier again. But yeah, if you're having difficulty getting a street free finish, it probably means your cloth is dirty. Whew, there we go. And finally, I'm just going to finish up with a bit of Mr. Sheen multi surface polish for coffee tables and things like that. Don't use this on the LCD, just onto the body of the laptop. Now the laptop's lovely and smooth, and it smells nice too.
There we go, look at that. Like I bought one. Except for that scratch down there, but ignore that. Pretend that scratch isn't there. Lovely. And there it is. Thank you very much for watching, everyone. I'll see you all next time. Bye for now.